Hi, yeah, Twelves. This is the uh, first of your desserts for your final menu. So I know you're all in lockdown. Let's hope that uh, we're back next week and we can uh, cook this one in class. So the chocolate tart is the recipe. The first thing I'm going to do for the chocolate tart is to melt the chocolate for it. Now, we've spoken about this in the past, chocolate burns very easily. So what I've got there is I've got my 125 grams of chocolate and I've got a pot of rapidly boiling water there. And now I'm going to switch that pot off. Okay, so we don't need a flame on that now. All we need is the heat from the water. And the water's not actually going to touch that bowl. So what we're looking for is, um, is enough heat to gently melt the chocolate without it burning. So we don't want any flames coming up the side and we don't want the water to actually touch that bowl because if it does, it's going to burn that chocolate and that chocolate won't melt effectively. So I'm just going to leave that on there for a second just to melt. And while that's happening, we're going to start preparing the rest of the filling for this. So I'm going to use uh, an egg yolk to set this chocolate tart. So I don't need the white at this stage. Now the white we can use for, um, for meringue, so I'll keep that to one side. And into that, I've got 25 grams of sugar. So I've got one egg yolk, 25 grams of sugar. Another thing that we've spoken about quite a lot is when you are whipping egg yolks and sugar together to make either custards or creme patissiere, you, use, you need to use a big bowl. A big bowl will allow you to get volume and it'll allow you to get air in there. Okay, so no small bowls for that, nice big bowls. I could do this on, um, on a KitchenAid mixer, but realistically I'm waiting for my chocolate to melt, so I may as well do that by hand. So I'm just gonna whisk those two together until that starts to become a paler looking mixture. Now if I was making a lot of this, I would definitely do it on a, um, on a mixer, but as I'm only doing one egg yolk, it would be quite hard to do that on a mixture. I'm just making a couple of chocolate tarts today. So, so I'm just looking for that to go a nice pale color. So as soon as that color is achieved, it's nice and pale, I can pop that down for a second, and then I can have a little look at my egg mixture. And I can see that that's starting to melt. And when I do do that with my egg mixture, I'm using a metal spoon. A metal spoon will um, will be far more effective because it can duck seat rather than a wooden spoon that doesn't. Okay, so that's starting to melt nicely there now. I've got a couple of tart shells uh, that I've already pre-made. So we're gonna be making these as a class. Now you've already made tart shells a couple of times already. You've made them for the French fruit tarts and you've made them for the citrus tarts. So it's exactly the same recipe. The only difference with these, I'm gonna brush them with a little bit of chocolate first to help set it and make it more crunchy when the customer eats it. So I'm just well waiting for the chocolate to melt with that. Um, secondly, with, with these tarts, you can watch that recipe on the YouTube channel. So there's a, a recipe just for the short crushed pastry tart shells. So if you need a reminder of how those are made, you can watch that recipe as well. So just waiting for that chocolate to start melting in there. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a mix now. You can see that that's starting to happen. So if I mix that a little bit, it will spread the heat out through the chocolate and hopefully that will melt a little bit quicker. And then we're just going to brush a little bit of that onto our shells. So just in the meantime, keep mixing that so that it doesn't start to break down. Chocolate's melting up nicely now. This is regular chocolate. Yeah, we're not using a uh, confiture. Confitures are much more um, expensive and also um, 
more difficult chocolate to use because it has to be tempered. Those of you that watch MasterChef will um, hear them going on quite often about tempered chocolate. It has to be taken to a certain temperature and then um, and then actually taken to a second temperature to get it to um, get it to snap and be uh, as crunchy as they like. So that, that this type of chocolate doesn't require that. This is your regular kind of Nestle, Cadbury um, chocolate that doesn't have such a high amount of cocoa butter in it. Still tastes great. Slightly sweeter than the coffee And that chocolate's just melting up nicely now. You see I haven't got a huge amount of heat with it. Just enough to melt the chocolate, no more than that. And quite often with chocolate, it is well worth mixing it constantly with a, a metal spoon to get it to uh, the consistency that you want. The chocolate can be melted in a microwave as well. If you do it in the microwave just for a few seconds at a time, so just for maybe yeah, 10, 20 seconds at a time, and again, keep mixing it until it achieves that consistency. Sometimes when you open a microwave, it won't look as though anything's happened at all to the chocolate, but then you start mixing it and you'll find that the chocolate will actually um, get to the desired consistency. So. so I'm just going to brush now some of my melted chocolate onto the base of my tart shell. So, so I'm just doing that just to set that base a little bit. Managed to break that one, so let's see if we can put that one back together. I don't think we can, so we'll just go on to the next one. See if I can do that without breaking it. Luckily, I've got another couple of chocolate tart shells. Uh, tart shells in the freezer, so I can go and um, grab another one and, uh, and put the rest of my chocolate mixture into that. So you'll see now that I've brushed my chocolate around the base of my shell. And I'm going as far up as I can without breaking that shell. That's that's probably the important thing, and you've seen just how easy it is to break one by my my um, demonstration of, of breaking a chocolate tart shell there for you. So that one there is about done. I'm just going to go and find another one in the freezer to use. Just got a second one there, and I'll just quickly brush that base with a little bit of chocolate. Hopefully, I won't be uh, breaking this one. Try and get a little bit more gentle with it. Got the sides. There's a lot of different recipes for chocolate tarts. Some of them are cooked using a, uh, a method where we pop them in the oven for a short amount of time. This one we're just going to set. And we're actually doing two things to set it. So we're doing the um, chocolate itself going cold. The second thing we're doing is um, butter. So butter is going to go cold as well. So I've got about, um, about 40 grams of butter here. I'm going to pop into there and I'm just going to stir that into my chocolate until that melts. So I've got melted chocolate and melted butter and both of those are going to set hard in my tart shell. I want to 
cook that chocolate and butter too much because the butter then will split. So I just want that to be warm enough just to melt that butter. And when it is, I'm going to take that off my stove. I'm going to pop those chocolate tart shells in the blast freezer. Just to make sure that I've got that um, chocolate really set hard before I put this mixture into it. So that's my chocolate and butter mixture now melted down. I'm going to make sure there's absolutely no lumps in there. So I don't want any lumps of butter going through into the tart. So just mixing that all together. It should be a nice glossy colour and a, a nice thick consistency with just the melted butter. I don't want to do that over there anymore because if I melt the butter anymore, it's going to go too runny. Okay, so there are some recipes that will um, add whipped cream to this as well. We're not going to do this on this occasion. So on this occasion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put my chocolate mixture into my egg mixture. And then I'm going to whisk those two together. And making sure that I've got all of that chocolate out of there. I can always use a scraper as well. Obviously, this should be enough for um, three tarts, but I've broken one, so, so we'll probably have a little bit of mixture left over. All of my chocolate mixture into there. Don't really need the whisk anymore, I can just fold these two together now. So the protein in that egg is going to set, as well as the butter and the chocolate. And I'm folding those two together until I've got a nice desired consistency. Now I've only given that mixture a short amount of time in the freezer. And then that mixture is going to be poured into my tart shell. until it comes up to the top. And then later on, we're going to take that tart shell and we're going to smooth off the top and pop it back into the fridge now. So tart shell goes back into the fridge and then when that's set, then we'll come back to the video and we'll show how to present that tart shell. Thank you, Doug.